Hey guys, and welcome back to Garden of Kaylin. Today is a bit of a gloomy day, but nothing a few Hoyas won't brighten up. Today we're talking Hoyas, and if you're not a Hoya person, stick around because you will be one soon. At least that's what my hopes are. But before we get started, hi, I'm Kayla and welcome back. If you're new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe if plants are your vibe. Now let's look at some Hoyas. So I originally wanted to do a video featuring all of my Hoyas, but walking around the house, I realized I have way too many to put into one video. So I decided to just break them down into small parts. Parts. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Anyway, number one, and they're not in any particular order, is my Hoya ring sand. This Hoya wasn't on my wish list or anything like that. I just ran into it and decided, oh my gosh, I'm in love with it. It wasn't one that I'd seen before, which is also not really a thing because I've only gotten into Hoya the last like year or two. So obviously there will be a lot that I just haven't heard of before, but oh my goodness, when I saw it in the nursery, it looked so green that it was almost blue. So obviously I had to have this. And then I went back and saw another one. And for some reason it looked bluer. So I got that one too. It's not in with this pot, as this pot was already pretty full, as you can tell. I just keep the other one upstairs and that is like my upstairs ring sand. But let me tell y'all, this Hoya has been growing like crazy. It hasn't flowered yet, but would you just get up on these leaves because are you serious with how splashy this is? I've been on splashy Hoyas real hard lately. I guess they're trending a lot right now, but this was just such a lucky find. And then to run into it again was even better. I don't think these are super rare or crazy expensive. I know they're not crazy expensive, but I don't know about the difficulty in finding one of these. I just know I hadn't seen it before, so I was more than happy to snatch it up. This one is on a trellis. The one upstairs isn't on one, but it's starting to need one very quickly. I think that the leaves are out of this world, y'all. Don't they just look almost blue? To me, they look almost blue. Especially from a further distance, they really start to look blue. At least to me, they do. I feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds with this one because the leaves are starting to get pretty large and it's super splashy. And then of course, how quickly they grow. I'm thinking about propagating this one and maybe giving a few out because I feel like more people need to have one of these. Or maybe I'll just do like a giveaway or something. I definitely want <laughs> more people to have this. I advocate for this Hoya hands down. And the pot that this one's in just makes it pop out even more. Such an incredible plant, you guys. So fast growing. Would love to see some flowers on it, but I'll take what I can get. This is my Hoya Calistophylla and we have just been through so much together. This looks even better in person than it does on camera. I actually just cut this Hoya back a little bit. Everything is just on one long stem. So I really wanted to fill this pot out. I said I was gonna put it back in the pot as soon as it rooted, but at this point it's starting to become its own plant. So I don't know anymore. I have this one in pond and in my cabinet almost directly under a grow light. So the growth has been rapid and consistent. It hasn't flowered yet, but it is growing into the most beautiful, beautiful plant. I love how vibrant this Hoya is. It really makes it look so prehistoric and otherworldly. And then of course you can tell these leaves get pretty big. I would love to have this plant up on a trellis. I think it would really make a big statement climbing up something, but then I wouldn't have anywhere to put it. So right now it's just staying in the cabinet and under the grow light where it can continue to push out these big, vibrant, beautiful leaves. And having it in the pond in this self-watering pot also makes a big difference. I'm so reluctant to move this because of how well it's been doing and I want it to continue to do well like this. I also want to see it up on a trellis, so I'm I'm torn, I'm really torn. That's also probably why I subconsciously have not put the second one that I propagated back into the pot. I think I want a second plant and maybe put that one up on a trellis, but this one to me is just really priceless and sort of untouchable. I don't, I don't want to mess with it too much. I did just cut it, but I don't wanna move it. I don't wanna move it, y'all. When I got it, it was maybe like a two or three leaf cutting. I think there's actually a video of me unboxing this, if I'm not mistaken. It was a little bit on the pricier side for a two or three leaf cutting. I think it was like $50, but I wanted it so bad and I'm so glad that I ended up getting it. Only thing I regret about it is not doing it sooner, honestly. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of these in nurseries yet. I have seen them once or twice. So it's possible that the price has maybe gone down on these. 
I have not checked it in maybe a year or so, so I'm not sure. But in my opinion, it's definitely worth some coins. Like, can you believe how pretty this is. The leaves are very thick and matte and then these veins are like this dark bluish black color. It's definitely a keeper. It almost looks like it's a cartoon. Anyway, I love the Calistophylla. Go get one. The next Hoya is a little bit on the newer side. This is my Hoya AH074 Silver Splash. That is a mouthful to say and this Hoya definitely warrants it. Like I said, I just kind of got this one about a month ago. It's only pushed out this this leaf here since I got it, but I love how much silver is on this Hoya. This leaf is almost completely silver and the silver is consistent on every leaf. If it's not completely silver like this one and kind of like that one, then a lot of it is silver, which is one thing that I love about this Hoya. So far, I'm confident that this color is gonna remain consistent. I do have it under a grow light and it's still pretty small. So I can't say definitely it's gonna remain this silver, but if it does push out a green leaf or two, I wouldn't mind because the rest of the leaves definitely would make up for it. I have a feeling this one is gonna get some pretty big leaves too. I looked this plant up on social media and it did not disappoint. Everybody's looked phenomenal. Everyone's. Well, of course they look phenomenal if they are posting them on Instagram, but I'm just saying I didn't see one that made me feel disappointed or made me feel like, oh, I might lose some of that silver. So I'm very, very pleased with how it's doing. Does anybody have this? Because I want to know if it's one, a fast grower, and two, if this silver remains stable, even if you don't have it directly under a grow light like I do. And with this Hoya, I don't even care if it flowers. I don't even care. The only thing that I'm obsessed with on this plant is the lead. Oh my goodness. I am looking out my window and I don't want to move, but there's a hummingbird and it's so cute. Never mind, it flew away. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to what this one's gonna do. I told you I've been in my splashy Hoya air lately. I can appreciate an all green Hoya as much as the next person, don't get me wrong, but when they have good color or good texture or like weird shaped leaves or something that stands out, I think that's what makes Hoyas iconic and that's really what draws me to them. So in this case, it would definitely be the colors on here. So be looking out for this one because in the future, I plan on showing you guys how much this has really grown. I have it in soil and my naked root planter and that just really helps me not have to stress out about watering it, but it's feeling a little light now. So it's actually probably time for me to water it again now. But yes, everyone, one of my faves. So I told you guys I could appreciate a plain green leaf and I wasn't kidding. This is my Hoya Ice Senses. It goes by a another name too, but I sense this is way easier to say. It's never ending right now. I cannot believe how much this has grown. And it's even finally after almost two years starting to bloom. I've actually shown this one on my channel once or twice before. And each time I show it, I get to look back like, oh my goodness, it's getting so big. So I think the last time I showed this was somewhere around December. And at the time of me recording this, it's July. So it's done a lot since then. And now that we're in the middle of summer, it's really taken off. It doesn't really sun stress. The margins just get pretty dark. This Hoya I originally got out of sheer boredom, but then I started getting really obsessed with how big the leaves got. And now I have to force myself to stop talking about it and try to show it less often. But I couldn't resist showing it to you guys today because it's just starting to get so big. Not a huge fan for how much these tendrils grow before I actually get leaves on them, but something has to get ahead of it to support these massive leaves. Someone left a comment when I showed this on a Hoya video before and said that it looked like a big old green apple and now I can't unsee it. And the flowers are looking like they're really about to be something. I'm so excited to see what the blooms actually look like. Especially since I've had it for two years, I would like to see a flower or two on this thing, but oh my gosh, y'all, I'm so impressed with the growth. And I keep this one in some pretty direct light. I've got it in front of a Southwest window and it's definitely thriving. But where I have it hanging in my office, I'm constantly like bumping into these tendrils. So 
I would like to somehow contain it. I just, I don't really know how much I can do for that right now. I'm just loving the growth and enjoying that while I still have it because in the winter time, it does slow down big time. And I'm at a point now where I don't even notice new leaves growing on it. I just walk up to it one day and it's got new leaves on it. It's definitely one of my less dramatic Hoyas. I water it when I remember. It's not fussy about the humidity levels. The growth is consistent. And did I mention it's blooming? But I don't know. What do you guys think? I had to put on sunglasses because the next Hoya is so vibrant. It's pretty much blinding. Okay, I'm doing too much. This, ladies and gentlemen, I was trying not to show you guys because I feel like I show it too much. But this is my Hoya Flamingo Dream. And the leaves come out this bright fuchsia color. And then they slowly fade to this little pink and then eventually to this cream color. How did I find this Hoya? I mean, I found it in a nursery, but I'm just saying, I can't believe I have one. And I haven't seen them in a nursery since then. So maybe I found like a little gem. It's such a girly and pretty pink plant. It's sort of like the Crimson Princess, but like way better if that makes sense. And of course the greens are greening, but we're not here for the green. We're here for all that fuchsia. And even as they fade off to that cream color, they still have that bright pink vein down the middle. If you're not convinced to love Hoyas by now, I don't know what it's gonna take. I really don't because this beauty is just breathtaking. It's such a plus that every time I look at this, there's some pink somewhere. And keep in mind that every part that you see that's cream started off this fuchsia color. It is a little bit on the slower side, but luckily when I got this Hoya, it already had several cuttings in it, so. I don't really have to be concerned about trying to fill the pot up, it's already full, but something inside me just makes me wanna duplicate it. And I've been trying really hard to tell myself that just because a plant is gorgeous, you don't like necessarily have to have 10 of them. It's a hard battle to fight though, especially with this one. I told you guys I talk about this one a lot, so I was like, uh, I'm not gonna show it. But I feel like this right now is like my most impressive Hoya. No, a lot of them are impressive. I don't know, I guess it's just still kind of new to me and I can't get over the pink in it. And I feel like other people would love it too, so. Here it is. I got this Hoya at a plant swap last year and the girl who gave it to me was describing it and I was like, I just, I'm not seeing it. But now I'm starting to see it. This is my Hoya SP Philippines and I've not seen one of these before or since. I tried to look it up online but a bunch of weird or different stuff started popping up so I'm still not all that sure. Originally this was just one cutting but I ended up chopping it into two or three and now it is finally starting to make its appearance. I love how it's sun stressing right now. I keep this one right under a grow light too so of course it's gonna sun stress. I haven't seen the flowers on it yet but my favorite thing about this is definitely the long leaves. It has a bit of that white veining too, which is something that makes this one also look a little bit prehistoric. I love like those crusty looking dry matte like crazy Hoya leaves, especially when they're big, so it's even more pronounced. I actually still have this in the stratum that I originally planted it in. I think this was one of my first plants to put into stratum. And in my opinion, it's a pretty slow grower. But I guess with leaves like this, she's saying, you're gonna have to wait. And I'm like, that's cool. Not that I have a choice, but I do think eventually I'll put it up on a trellis. I think it would look good on a trellis. What do y'all think? It would have to be a decent sized trellis, I assume, since the leaves are a little bit longer but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I need a few more sun stress leaves, a little bit more of a root system, and then I'll probably go ahead and put this in soil. She's looking pretty good so far. This next one is still pretty small, but it's quite a big deal to me. This is my Hoya Sagilatus, and we were off to such a rough start. Originally, I was pretty unsure about this guy. He was a little finicky and constantly withering. It was like nothing I did could keep him happy. Then I learned they simply don't like to dry out. I love the not so subtle splashiness. I didn't realize there was so much of it. They're nice and oval shaped and the way that they slightly curl under gives them kind of a juicy look at a glance. So after months of what seemed like this plant just slowly withering away, it's finally starting to take off now. And I just couldn't keep it happy until I put it in this naked root planter. So now it's not drying out as quickly and I'm not risking root rot. So I get to have both of those things in one. And it appears that 
that's what it took for this to finally start to thrive. This guy is definitely going on a trellis. In fact, I feel like I could maybe put it onto a trellis now, but I'm like, hold on, slow your roll. This guy just started to grow for real. So I'm kind of holding off on it for right now. Like I said, I wasn't so sure about this one at first. I had it in another video when it was barely a cutting. So this is actually a lot of growth for me, especially when it wasn't doing anything for a long time. If I were to recommend this, it would be under the condition and assumption that you can keep it in high humidity and you can keep it watered. But it would be such an accomplishment for me to actually get this plant to get massive. So that's kind of what I'm working on for now. I don't think I've ever shown this Hoya on here before. I think that the last time I did a Hoya video, I didn't have this one yet. And look how much it's growing already. This is my Hoya Hutchkiliana pink. And we're still waiting on those cute little pink flowers to appear. But isn't this such a cutie? I love how the leaves grow so closely together. And they're nice and small, but also have like a juicy look to them. And it also appears that it's in their nature to kind of cascade and hug the pot that they're in. Yet another thing that I love about them, I just think that this is a great Hoya to have with smaller leaves. I'm of course a big leaf Hoya fan, but if I am gonna get some smaller ones, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And small leaf Hoyas usually look real good on a trellis, but I think this is one that I'm going to continue to let kind of just trail out of the pot. I think it's so cute that way. And I think it would be okay for me to allow that because these tendrils don't go too crazy. I mean, they're, they're present, but you know, they don't get too long before leaves start forming on them. So I think this is a great trailing plant. It doesn't seem all that fussy either and they are incredibly fast growers. So I've only had this for about two months and when I first got it, it was not growing out of the pot at all. And now we just have, we got little cute leaves everywhere. And I have it in soil. It wasn't one that I was like super scared to repot right away. It seemed to be pretty resilient. And so far it is, and it's easy to care for. I'm still waiting to get my hands on the variegated one right now. And they're not hard to find. I just haven't gotten around to it. This has been one of my easiest Hoyas ever. And it looks like it would be super easy to propagate. It's almost like it really wants to be propagated. I do have some room in the pot to kind of add a few more little clippings. So I don't know, and I might be able to put them right into the soil. But yeah, definitely love this guy. I scored this Hoya Elliptica on a live sale recently, and I was very pleased when it arrived and it was a lot bigger than I expected. I mean, of course I saw it before I purchased it, but it just looked a lot smaller on camera for some reason. The leaves have these markings on them that I am obsessed with, and I would really like to get the leaves a little bit bigger so that it pops out a whole lot more. But like I said, I got this one like a month ago and it's already exceeded my expectations so I'm not asking too much of it right now. To me, it's almost like a mini reverse Callistophylla. And I really just have a thing for these Stone Age markings, especially in contrast with the black margin. A lot of my Hoyas kind of have the same characteristics and I'm really trying to be a little bit more diverse and adventurous with my selections lately. But this one I just had to have, I couldn't resist it. Right now I'm just kind of letting it continue to adjust to its new home and grow a little bit more. Also, I'm using that as an excuse to not have to repot it and put it up on a trellis. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. This is my Hoya Saba or Saba. Also a pretty new one, but y'all, the leaves on it are just the best thing ever. They're kind of thinner. I love how light green these leaves are and in contrast with the dark veins on them. I saw this at a not so local nursery and couldn't pass it up because I knew I wasn't driving that far again anytime soon. When I first got it, it only had the two leaves and then it pushed this one out. And then I just got this long tendril on it. So I'm waiting for that to start popping leaves out. I know that the tendrils are a big part of Hoyas, but gosh, if I could just like, don't grow the tendril until you're ready to grow the leaf. I especially love when they have these markings, but they're matte too. I think that adds a little bit more uniqueness to them. To sum it all up, I just love having stuff on my leaves. I love there being something to look at on the actual leaves, especially when there's a lot of them, you know? I think it's just such a statement piece, even if it's just texture. And this one doesn't have a whole lot of it, but the color and contrast makes up for that. In addition to the size of the leaves, I think this is gonna be one of my favorite Hoyas. This is my Hoya Bertonier, and I just got the variegated one, I'm so happy. But I was of course happy with the green one as well. These leaves have my heart skipping beats, like I cannot get enough of them. They're really soft, almost like there's a 
thick layer of dust on them. In fact, the first time I felt them, I thought that's what it was. And my favorite thing about this Hoya is how the leaves are so green, they're blue. I have this directly under a grow light. And so I think the leaves don't sun stress. I think they just get a little bit darker. This is one that I propagated from the mother plant. So even as a small plant, they look so incredible. It almost looks like a little succulent. I cannot get enough of this plant. And if you haven't noticed, I have them both in white planters because I think the white just really makes that green pop even more. And even my little baby variegated one looks good. I think they just look great in every form. I have noticed that they're a little bit on the slower side. My mother plant is almost three years old and it's just now starting to kind of climb out of the pot. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's beautiful either way. Just a little observation that I made. I do think that this one is a staple if you can get your hands on one. I feel like I don't see them that often, but I do know that when I got this one, I mean, it was a while back, but I got this from a big box store. I do remember that much. It's so special to me. I actually can't wait for this one to bloom. I've never seen the flowers. So I think I would jump out of my skin if I walked down and saw that this was in bloom one day. I'm still hoping for that, but since it is a little bit on the slower side, I'm not in any rush. I just wanted to keep growing. Another splashy one here, and I don't know if y'all are starting to pick up on a trend, but this is my Hoya Wilbur Graves, the China form. And at first I didn't really want to show it, but I figured it would be good to kind of document the growth of it. It's still pretty new. It's only about two months old. And I've been just a little bit confused because I put it right under a green light and the first two leaves that it popped out since then were these two, which have the least amount of color in them. So I'm like, okay, do your thing. I actually got this when I saw someone on Instagram and theirs was pretty big. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is impressive. So I tried to hunt it down and I was like, oh, that's why a bunch of people don't have it because they are not really cheap. I mean, I think I paid like $60 for a one leaf cutting. So needless to say, I'm giving this one a little bit of extra care because I don't have time. I don't have time for this one to die. I feel like I say this about all my plants, but I'm so obsessed with this guy right now. It was just so beautiful sitting there calling my name. I just couldn't pass it up. I tried, I really did. In fact, I did pass it up for like four months before I ended up getting it, but here it is now, so too late too late. Like I said, it was just one leaf, but I ended up cutting it into like two or three different cuttings because I want a big full pot of this and I want it up on a trellis and I also want one trelling. So I'm just kind of going crazy and I'm doing a whole lot of planning for a Hoya with four leaves on it. But I kind of believe in myself. And if I really believe in myself, could I just kind of think this into growing massive in the next month. But right now I'm just gonna keep on keeping on with this guy. I have him in stratum. He doesn't even really have a whole lot of roots right now. This is where he's gonna stay for now. The next Hoya has been a pain in my ass. And now she's finally starting to act right. This is my Hoya Curtisii. Y'all, I'm not playing when I say she struggled for so long. In fact, I have two of these and the one that's living outside of the cabinet is looking ridiculous right now. So cabinet life is a way to go for this diva. I suppose she doesn't like to dry out and she likes constant humidity. And I don't have a whole lot of small leaf Hoyas, but the ones that I do have, I absolutely adore, which is why I'm so glad she finally started behaving. The slight sun stressing that she's been doing is such an improvement. We've come a long, long, way. I do go ahead and cut her back from time to time and she's kind of attached to the back of the cabinet so she can only go down so far before she hits the shelf and I like how full she is when she is cut a little bit shorter so it works out but let's get a closer look at these leaves because when she is sun stressing the leaves appear to be almost purple which is so cool to me. I love that the green part of the leaf just gets darker but the splashiness is still splashing and this one's also on a self-watering planter but it's like flat in the back so it can go up against you know a flat surface so I think that I've finally figured out the perfect formula for this Hoya it did take a while but I learned a lot from it and it's thriving now so that's all I can ask for so you guys that's gonna do it for today's video thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it I'll do another one down the road with another portion of my Hoya collection I know a few of you asked to see my entire collection but honey I got stuff to do I can't stand in front of this camera all day anyway thanks so much for your support guys and I'll see you in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye guys!